Help support the companies that support our community. For the bodies, I'm going to use a piece of a baseball bat blank. So I buy bat blanks all the time. Anytime I find them on sale and or cheap, they're nice straight grain maple and you can use them for little stuff like this. I actually slice these things up in little pieces too to make pendants. Whenever I do a demo for the joiner jig, I just slice up two or three of these for the demo, but it's nice wood, it's dry, and it works out perfect. So I put, I sized up the the ends of both of them. These aren't tenons, this is just the size I want them. So that they're gonna be identical little cones, and I'm using a skew chisel to true them up. I want them nice and straight, and I want them identical because I'm gonna put them together when, it, when I'm all done, and I want that line to be perfect on both of them. So they need to be the same height, the same diameter, everything. So I'm just sizing all of that up to make sure that it fit together nicely. Once I got them turned, I went ahead and sanded them, put the oil on, got that all finished, and then switched out my live center. So the live center I had in there had a point in it, and I switched it to the one without the point. So this is a lamp rod drill, and it goes through your uh, tailstock and all the way through the live center so that you can put a hole dead center on the piece. That way, I'm gonna mount the feet and the head into that hole, and I flipped it around and did the other side too and just cleaned up the end of it here a little bit. Little part there in the center, that's gonna be sanded away. They're gonna be, gonna be flat. I just wanted to cup them out a little bit on each side too so that when I do drill in for the feet, that they're all all flat and the feet go up and up inside of it a little bit. And for that, I just use a sanding pad in my Jacobs chuck and went ahead and worked through and got those all cleaned up. So this next part is another piece of maple and I'm gonna make the feet out of this. So it's kind of the same process with this. I got it all true. I'm gonna use the calipers again because these are gonna be identical in the diameter. I'm shaping them a little bit different from each other but they're they're roughly the same same size diameter, just a little different, different slope on them. So the center right there is going to be the tenon that goes inside of the part, the body that we just turned. So I'm just trying to get that right, get it all cleaned up, and I'm cupping those out a little bit too, so that when I glue them to the little base, they sit nice and flat. I ran through all the grits, sanded these up, and then went ahead and cut, cut them apart. Once I got them done, I'll go ahead and glue the feet in. So the lamp rod didn't go all the way through, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole for what's gonna be the feet on one side of this and the head on the other side. It's gonna get flipped, they're gonna be opposite. So I'm just drilling down in now with the Forstner bit 
and then we'll get the feet glued in. And the other one there is flipped around and the feet are going to go on it just like that. The next piece here, same thing, little another piece of maple and this is going to be both of the heads. So same process here. I'm going to shape the heads a little bit different but same process, get it trued up. We're going to do both of them at the same time. Just coming down in the middle here. So eventually that is going to be the tenon that goes in inside the bodies. But I need a little bit of stability before I get too crazy with it. So I can turn the, turn the heads and not get too much vibration. So again, the lay speed is 2,500 RPM, and I'm just doing the neckline. So they are a little bit different on the neckline. His is a little blockier, and her she has a little bit more of a, a neckline right there. So I'm just shaping them with the spindle gouge. And then once I get get that done I will sand it and then we'll bring down that part in the tent in the center for the tenon Same thing with these, I made sure they were cupped out just a little bit so that they sit nice and flat on the body. Then I went ahead and ran through the grits, got it sanded, and they're both going to have hats on, so I'm not worried about that little nub on the tops of their heads. The hat's going to cover that up. Just use the pole saw and sawed almost almost all the way through on each each of these pieces so it's easier to keep it together like this and not go all the way through on it and then once i got it saw it in half just a little twist and they just come apart and then just a little bit of glue and glued the heads into the bodies no, this isn't French's mustard. <laughs> it's a tight bond too. I just put it in that bottle. It's easier, easier to get out and uh, just handier to have around a little bottle of it. All right, so I'm going to do the hats now, and I have to do these individually. They don't don't look the same. So it's a piece of walnut. Just got it trued up. Put it in the chuck, and we'll make both the hats out of this same piece here. So the camera is on a tripod at this point because Robin is sensitive to walnut and so I'm out in the shop by myself now. So sorry about the angles and everything, but yeah, she's not out here holding the camera and moving it around. So this is going to be her hat. So I got the underside of it cupped out for the head. Now I'm just shaping the top of it. Once I got that all done, I went ahead and ran through all the grits and then parted this off of there. Now I'm working on his hat, so same process here. I just cupped out the bottom of it. Just made a little divot in the center for his head. And then I'll start shaping the outside of it.
And the same thing with this, after I have it shaped, I go ahead and run through all the grits before parting it off. So there was a little nub left on the both the hats and I just hand sanded the, that off. Now after I got it got that done, a little bit more wood glue and I just put a little daub on one side of it and then stuck it on the, on their heads and then spun it around a little bit to get it all around there. And just kind of tipped it back, figured out what what looked good and then let them set up for an hour or so. While the hats were drying, I grabbed another piece of walnut and started working on the base. So I'm gonna glue them both onto the base and this is a piece of walnut. I think it's a, it's about six or seven inches around and I'm just trued it up and I'm gonna put a tenon on one end of it so that we can grab it in the chuck. So this is the bottom, so I'm gonna cup it out so it sits nice and flat and put a recess in it so I can flip it around in the chuck and hold on to it and finish off the top. It's pretty straightforward here. Just got it cupped out a little bit and then made a recess. I'm using that number one hollower to shape the top of it. Just get it cleaned up. And you'll see here in a second, I, I keep checking it actually with the tool because I need it, need it pretty flat. So I use the, the side of the tool to test that. And I keep taking off a little bit more out of the center until, it, until it's nice and flat across there. And then ran through all the grits and sanded it up. I didn't put any oil on this yet because I need to glue their feet to it. After I got it sanded, a little bit more glue just on the bottom of their feet and set them on the base. After that dried, I went ahead and oiled the hats and the base and any little spot I might have missed on the rest of it. That walnut really darkens up so that that's nice, it, it pops that the base and the hats are out of the dark walnut. There we go, I got it all done. So it is out of maple and walnut. The base is five and a half inches roughly, and it's about eight and a half inches tall. 
and so it was a fun project doing all the little pieces I like I really like doing projects like this but we thought it'd be a great Valentine's Day project so doing those little cones it, if you're gonna do something like this where you're gonna put them together make sure that those are the same so that when you put them together that gap is is the same it's not closer on the top or on the bottom but it was a really fun project and I thought they were cute I'm not so Robin found the picture on Pinterest um, and I'm not sure who actually had made them first, but it was a it was a thought it'd be a great Valentine's Day project. So I was, somebody was asking about like where we get project ideas and stuff too. Some of the stuff we come up with on our own. Some of it or a lot of it is on Pinterest too. Pinterest is a great place to get ideas for doing woodworking or wood turning projects or actually anything because they pull from a ton of different websites. Um, so it's not just like going on on like Facebook and looking up you know or, or Instagram and looking up wood turning it pulls from a ton of different places so there's a lot more variety to choose from so if you're looking for project ideas check out Pinterest it's it really you know there's tons of stuff out there all right hope you enjoyed the project and we will see you next week all right take care